right, Pat, what's going on in here? Well, we're having a problem with the shower. Um, when I think I have the temperature all set, all of a sudden, um, it starts getting cold. Okay, it gets colder, yeah. Yep. And um, this kept happening, and I was trying to figure out what was wrong, and decided that when you turn the hot water on, it starts disappearing. Okay, let's see it. Nothing. Okay. Eventually, it's going to drift off again, too. And there it goes, getting less and less. That's just about off. All right. Believe it or not, I've seen this before, and we're going to fix this for you. Really? That's great. It starts by me shutting off the water. So what you've got here, Pat, is called a three valve. There's a hot water stem right here, a cold water stem right here, and the diverter is in the middle. That helps determine if the water comes out of the spout or the shower head. And I think you have a problem right here in the hot stem. Now, in order to work on the working parts of this, I have to expose the handle and the escutcheons on these. Anytime you look at these handles, you realize they have to be attached somehow. To get at the screw, you have to pry off the index from the end. A good tip is to make sure you have something in the tub drain so you don't drop it right down the drain. All right, so there's that. And what's behind here is a Phillips screw. So I want to loosen that counterclockwise. And now when I get it out a little bit, I want to pull the handle towards the screw and then keep on loosening. So I'll pull that handle right off the stem. Sometimes it does not come easy. All right. Oh, so these are not original handles. This is this pretty ingenious bushing that was designed to fit onto any number of stems in here and will let you have any style handle you wanted. All right. So that means that the shower valve itself is older than these handles. So now what I have to do with one removed, I can now remove the escutcheon right here. And this is the cover plate. All right. So now that exposes the stem unit right here. There's a stem and there's a bonnet right there. Now I need to back this out of the valve that's inside the wall. Now in some cases I can use a pair of pliers because this nut right here is outside of the wall so I could loosen it right like that. But they also make a set of socket wrenches, all different shapes and sizes for the different valves that are on the market. I'm going to use that. Now with a pair of pliers I can loosen it. There we go. All right, Pat, so here is your stem unit. This is the bonnet right here. I put the handle back on for you. So now you can see what happens when you turn the handle. This stem unit goes in or it goes out because it has threads inside here. Now it's pushing down a washer right here at the end against a seat that's inside the faucet. So the first thing I notice is that this washer is not installed correctly. See how it's rising on one side? So that's one of the issues, but I don't think it's the whole issue. The other is this. Now, if I'm going to hold this, and you watch what happens right here when I try to move this handle. Do you see right here how there's a lot of wiggle? Yeah. It shouldn't be like that. This is a brand new stem right here. I've cut it apart. So now you can see the male threads and the female threads right here. And when I turn it, it goes up and it goes down. But you'll notice if I wiggle it, there's no slop at all. It's really tight because these are milled perfectly. These ones are probably worn out. Now what happens is, that particularly with your case where it's a hot water stem, imagine what happens. You've opened up a little bit. And now, super hot water comes up from the basement. And what people don't realize is that any metal, when you heat it up, it gets expanded. It gets longer. So now you've opened it up like this. The hot water touches that brass stem right here, and it actually gets longer. What does it do? It really just closes off the, the opening. Now you open it a little bit more, and it just does it again because it keeps expanding because there's so much slop in there. So what I think is happening is that the threads are just worn out on this old unit. So we're going to have to replace it. But I just happen to have the right units with me. Isn't that good? Good. All right. Now before I install the new stem, I also want to replace the seat. Now this is the part that the washer sits against that goes inside the valve body, which is inside the wall. Now they make a special wrench for that. It's called a seat wrench. It's basically a tapered Allen wrench designed to be able to go right inside that seat and back the old one out and install the new one. Let's see how we do. Come on, baby. Okay, yep. There we go. There 
Here's the old one right there. Okay. Looks like it was ready for replacement. All right. So I want to put a little bit of pipe thread sealant on these threads. And then try to get it threaded in without losing it inside the wall. Good. So now we can install our new stem unit with its bonnet. There's a special gasket right here already. And now we just tighten it up. And then snug it up with the same wrench. All right. So right now, your hot side is completely rebuilt, the stem and the seat. But because I have the parts and because I like you, we're going to rebuild all the rest of it, the diverter and the cold, all right? Great. And a little bit of plumber's putty will seal those escutcheons against the tile. We're going to reuse those bushings from the old stem units to make sure we can install those handles again. Give it a try. Hot water is on, and it looks like the hot water is staying on. Fantastic, right. Richard. Thank you. Yeah.